Now first, full credit goes to Steve Sanderson for the announcement of Blazer United. I just want to spread the word here. So what actually is Blazer United? Well, I get so many questions about Blazer server, Blazer WebAssembly. What should you actually use? And what about SEO actually? How does that work with Blazer? Now, what if I told you, you don't have to worry about any of this with the upcoming Blazer United in .NET 8. This thing will combine plain HTML with rich interactive sparse single page applications in only one technology or architecture. Let me explain. In Steve's video, he demonstrates new features of .NET 8 with the Blazor you already know, but changed the behavior, for instance, with just one attribute. That's pretty much it, but let's dive into his video. Let's start with server rendered HTML. Here we see a recipe application with its source code plain HTML. To build this thing, Steve used a Razor component as you know it within Blazor. This also works with forms. Steve uses a typical Blazor edit form component and it even works with validation. After this example, Steve introduces the first attribute, stream rendering. This means that all UI states like the loading state here can be streamed to the browser. In other words, your application, or let's say the skeleton of your application loads faster. And if we have to make an HTTP call and wait for a second to get some data, the user already sees your page together with a little loading text, for instance that's already a greatly improved user experience. And to improve the user experience even further, we have to add a little JavaScript to our page. And this then will make navigation and form posts faster. In Steve's example, we see that we only fetch the necessary HTML and the images from the server. No need for CSS or anything else because the page load is intercepted. No full page refresh is necessary here. Please note, this is still server rendered HTML, not really a spa technology as Steve points out in this example. Now in the next example, Steve finally uses single page application technology. Here users can add recipes to the application. Currently, the add button won't do anything because this is not an interactive component yet. To make this a Blazor server interactive component, for instance, we again simply add an attribute to that component. Here it's the render mode attribute for the ingredients list editor component and Steve sets the render mode to server. In the dev tools, we can now see that the necessary WebSocket connection for Blazor server is only made when we access a page where a component with the server render mode is used. Steve then shows that we can use this attribute not only for components, but also for a complete page. The great thing about this, apart from the fact that all components now work, is that the WebSocket connection only exists on this page and it also terminates again as soon as the user leaves this page. All right, now what about Blazor WebAssembly? Well, just use the render mode WebAssembly, right? Now everything works as before, but the WebAssembly runtime is only dynamically started when we really need it on a certain page, similar to the WebSocket connection before. And now the best thing is, you actually don't have to worry about whether you have to use Blazor WebAssembly or server. You can let the system decide dynamically, as Steve puts it. He sets the render mode to auto. Now we've got the instant startup of Blazor server combined with the zero latency of Blazor WebAssembly. And this works as follows. When you access a page for the first time, like the recipe editor in this example, you've got a Blazor server connection because you haven't got the WebAssembly files cached yet. But these are actually downloaded in the background. This means the next time you visit this page, it uses the WebAssembly files and does not start up a WebSocket connection. And all that works without having to change your architecture. Isn't that just crazy? Now my two cents, I just think this is incredible. I highly recommend checking out Steve's video. Just click here on the screen to start watching. And we will definitely cover this in upcoming .NET Web Academy cohorts as soon as Blazor United is released.